Hey pundit, the practitioner here, Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parasitic researcher, technical agnostic, and 40 and skeptic. Um, hey, I just wanted to, uh, I was just trying to uh, take a look, at, I took a look at your vids in terms of the, uh, in terms of the statistics and the like, and I was laughing my head off about, um, about the, uh, about the polls. I actually took a look at some of those, um, some of the stats you were quoting there. I also saw similar reflections on the Gallup polls down, uh, down in your guys' country. And it's, um, it's amazing. I am literally amazed at the sort of crap. Unfortunately, um, I'd like to warn you about the fact that uh, um, you are thinking that in terms of abroad, things are working better. But um, just north of your border, things are starting to get a little crappy ourselves. Um, you know, Canada's always had a bit of a reputation for being, you know, a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more liberal, a little less religious, <laughs> you know, and a little bit more scientifically oriented than the United States. However, um, here are some startling facts about up north that you might not necessarily know, and uh, that even though Canada is supposed to be able to maintain its, uh, a certain amount of uh, critical thinking and a, you know a ability to uh, you know water down uh, you know to have a good deal more sense than the U.S. on a lot of stuff, um, unfortunately, uh, American stupidity is slowly creeping its way up here. Prominent examples of this: a re um, there have been some recent reports about uh, about certain high schools actually uh, having. Uh, certain high school teachers having uh, caused debates, um, you know, having asked for debates in their science class for students, uh, one group of the students, to um, research the creation science point of view, the other one to research up on the theory of evolution, and to debate each side in class. Problem with this, creationism isn't a science. There is no scientific basis for it, no peer-reviewed literature, nothing! <laughs> so, yeah, it's sort of like a false, del oh god. Anyway, don't get me started on the rest of it. Um, in Canada, we have a um, we have a provincialized the education system here is provincialized. There is, how, uh, however, severe, uh, serious standardized testing, and um, there is some standardized testing um, that uh, the, basically what happens is that uh, clean across each of the provinces. Uh, there is a um, there is a well as I just said there's standardized testing which uh, not only deals with uh, with uh, province which not only deals with individual people but what also ranks schools. Um, the high school I went to, which was a private school, ranked uh, number 19 in British Columbia and ranked in the top 50 in all of Canada. Um, like, uh, you know, it wasn't that bad at all. Um, BC is, is amongst one of the highest provinces uh, for... Uh, is, uh, BC and Ontario are two of the highest... Pro well, actually, no, not Ontario. Sorry. Uh, BC is one of the highest provinces for mathematics and other capabilities like that. Um, Canada is ranking amongst the highest, uh, you know, in the world for uh, mathematics. We're ranking up in the top... 20 if memory serves. Again, like I said, I just uh, I was quoting these statistics from about five, uh, three, four years ago, so I'm not sure if they've changed since then. But anyway, um, uh, but I will tell you a fact which I did find out. The lowest 10% of schools. Sorry, uh, what was it now? No, sorry, got that wrong. The highest 10% of the schools receive over 60% of the money. Yes, the schools which actually need the least amount of money, uh, and it's not in performance. These are the, and I should mention that also these top 10% of schools are also the schools which are also happen to be in the white, middle to upper class suburban areas. The, the schools in the inner cities don't receive any funding at all. You know, uh, they receive little to, uh, you know, next to no funding whatsoever. And, um, you know, it does mean that there is some severe uh, de uh, you know, deficits, and particularly this is in Ontario. Um, you know, there's uh, you know some severe deficits in terms of um, uh, you know how things work. The second uh, problem that I noticed in relation to where you were talking about was just standardized testing clean across the board. That take that fails to take into account uh, one small aspect, which luckily uh, in Canada we are taking into account. Uh, it varies from province to province, but it is doing okay. Uh, this is the issue of disabilities. Uh, speaking as someone with an autistic spectrum disorder, uh, i.e. Asperger's syndrome. Um, I have a, I often had difficulty in high school because of the fact that I was supposed to work under the same time limits as, time limits as everyone else. Uh, reason for this being is that uh, my anxiety, um, the anxiety aspects of my uh, Asperger's, would cause me to start panicking about the time limit and not allow me to actually think about the material. <laughs> now, of course, once uh, once they, uh, if there was a time limit, but they didn't tell me what the time limit was, or if they told me that I had extra time or what have you, I was actually able to perform considerably better on my work because of the fact that I wasn't actually worrying about the time limit. It was more of a psychological thing. Um, 
but anyway, uh, you know, that's, you know, minor amendments. Um, in Canada, uh, we actually have not only provided standardized testing, but in the event that you have been uh, standardized tested and found by a neuropsychologist or something to have a disability which might hamper your capability, they provide you certain amounts of accommodations to work from it. And in some cases, it does accept, you know, um, you know, with, with only mi one, one or two minor quirks, um, the performance levels of, you know, people with various disabilities shoots up considerably. I mean, uh, I've known, um, I've known uh, my father, who's a uh, my father, who's also an Aspie. Uh, he took engineering technology, and he ended up getting straight A's because of the fact that he was able to take a couple of accommodations, um, writing a separate space for his self-talk, uh, a little bit of extra time. I mean, you know, and eventually with you know, and with the time and energy that he had, he was able to not only solve the problems and you know, and and work things to the point where he knew his calculus and the like second nature. Um, you know, he was able to go through and, uh, you know, like I said, he passed everything with straight A's, and he was even able to improve his handwriting, you know, circumventing one of our own uh, largest quirks. So, you know, um, but anyway, that's just personal experience. The, uh, um, you know, in Canada, we've got, um, in Canada, uh, let me give you some of the other stats. In Canada, every person is, tra is trained to find the provinces. Yes, the curriculum. Uh, we we do have some sort of we do have certain federal uh, national standards, and one of which is that they have to teach you where all the provinces are. Luckily, however, this is a good thing in Can uh, luckily, however, in Canada, this is considerably easier than the United States, considering that there's over 50 states that you guys have to worry about. We only have 10 provinces and now three territories, <laughs> um, amongst other stuff like that. Um, ma uh, mathematics is a you know the grade school mathematical uh, graduation scores do seem to be okay, but there is a problem. Um, roughly, despite the fact that our mathematical scores are doing okay, uh, you know, at least in general, um, unfortunately, the overall level of graduating mathematics has uh, reached to about a grade level, uh, 11 level. Roughly 40% of all Canadians who graduate high school uh, do not, um, you know, can't remember how to do a quadratic equation after their final exam. Roughly something on the order of 50% of, gra of grade 12 students graduating from the public high schools in Canada can't construct a complex English sentence. <laughs> Uh, fortunately, however, uh, the post-secondary education system is taking up the slack for that. Um, there is a considerable amount of uh, British Columbia recently passed laws which would allow for um, adult basic education, uh, i.e., going back and uh, you know taking uh, taking classes to remake up uh, you know the marks you might have screwed up on in high school. Uh, that is now absolutely free, and they actually provide disability accommodations. Um, now, of course, mind you, this is only British Columbia. Uh, the other provinces are kind of varying in this sort of respect. Oh. And here's the other cool thing. Uh, you were talking about uh, religious and ghosts. Well, guess what? Based on the uh, fair, based on the small amount, based on what scientific evidence there is for acupuncture, two provinces have approved acupuncture legally under their Medicare systems. And here's the uh, here's the cool bit, which they don't do in the United States. Even though the National Institute of Health down in the United States said that acupuncture was okay for pain relief, uh, you know, uh, pregnancy-related nausea, that sort of thing. It's not very well regulated down in the United States. In Canada, and the only two provinces, British Columbia and Ontario, where it's uh, where it's been approved, it's actually regulated both by traditional me Chinese medicine doctors and by Western medicine doctors. There's a collaborative board of the two who are working, you know, to make sure that every acupuncturist passes a certain level of, um, you know, of training and of, uh, exp you know, of, of uh, you know, of, pro of professional, uh, of professional. Um, professional competence before they're granted their license to practice. Otherwise, they're told to go back to school and keep doing it. Um, you know, it, um, you can actually be, uh, you can actually have the uh, similar penalties if, uh, if you practice acupuncture without a license compared to what happens if you practice medicine without a license in Canada. So the, uh, you know, the laws are considerably better about this here. Now, of course, uh, quackwatch.org actually tried to fight Ontario uh, getting it in, but uh, their particular argument had some very, very um, sloppy means of doing so and it got called out and yada, yada, yada. Um, again, I don't want to go into technical details on this, but acupuncture, and I want to also make uh, one thing perfectly clear. Uh, to those of you who are watching, acupuncture only has evidence right now to deal with pain relief beyond placebo effect. Any other, dis uh, any other diseases, don't trust acupuncture for. It has been untested or has little to no scientific evidence, or is no uh, it, is, uh, it has been untested, or if it has been tested, the scientific evidence has shown that there is no uh, evidence for it. Anyway, so that's just uh, the thoughts on that. Um, let's see, uh, belief in psi phenomena. Actually, um, in relation to psi phenomena and religion, um, belief in psi phenomena is considerably low here in Canada. 
Um, there is a certain amount of actual honest research going on, uh, interesting going on about it. But, um, you know, we've only got, to the best of my knowledge, at least only one university which is actually interested in, uh, in doing site research. And ironically, it's the, one of the best universities in Canada for scientific research, period. And the only reason that, parapsych uh, that parapsychology is there, too, is because it just happens to cover every science. That's McGill University. Uh, some of its findings have been, uh, you know, have been some of the, amongst some of the most rigorous. Um, you know, and it's still going on. So, like I said, it's kind of cool that way. Um, other than that, I think we are a tad smarter than Americans, though. Toodles.